Hello, and welcome to the Renaissance English History Podcast Tutor Minute, your mostly daily dose of all things related to medieval and Renaissance England. So today I'm going to talk about Bess of Hardwick. She's super cool. I really like her. She was this total entrepreneurial kind of self-made woman who also married well, but was very smart about what she did in her marriages. Um, chroniclers at the time didn't really like her. There was this kind of view that she was plotting and um, into intrigue to try to build a dynasty, which she probably was, but it, I'm sorry, I'm going to go on a little feminist rant here. It was okay when men did it, but not when women did it. So sorry. <sighs> okay. Feminist rant over. <laughs> so um, Bess of Hardwick, super cool. She was born in the 1520s. And she was born into kind of like a gentle family. It wasn't noble, but she wasn't poor. But then um, her father died when she was still very young. And her mother struggled to try to figure out uh, how she was going to keep the land. They lost some land. It was all kind of really hard. And Bess had to watch that. So that was her early childhood. And then she went to serve in the household, in a household kind of nearby, which was common for women. It was sort of how they would finish their education was um, through going and living in a, another household. They would maybe meet a husband, maybe have somebody help them to get up, move up in the world. So she did that and, and she did meet a husband. She got married when she was 15. Uh, but then her husband died after a year. So she was a widow, but she got a widow's kind of pension, a widow's dower out of that. And she was entitled to a third of the estates. So, um, she was getting about 30 pounds a year, which was quite good for a young woman of that age. So, uh, then she moved on to the gray household. So the gray household was lady Jane gray and her family. Lady Jane was the daughter. So it was actually Francis gray was the mother and Francis gray was the niece of Henry the eighth. So lady Jane gray was the great niece of Henry the eighth and she was a Protestant. So as Edward the sixth was dying, he was, um, dying young and he, he was a big Protestant. Um, he was worried that when he died, his sister Mary, who was Catholic, would overturn all of the reforms that he had put into place. So he actually came up with this, he called it his device for the succession. And in his device, he made Lady Jane his heir. Um, this lasted for nine days before Mary, who was the rightful heir, was able to get an army and come into London and she was welcomed. People didn't fight against it. And so she, then she became the rightful queen. Poor Jane wound up being killed. It was all messy. I'll have to talk about Jane Grey sometime. But anyway, suffice it to say that Bess of Hardwick was in the household, would have known Jane Grey. And in that household, she met her next husband. His name was William of Cavendish. So William of Cavendish had been, he had been working for Thomas Cromwell during the dissolution of the monasteries, which I talked about, I think, last week. And he um, had made a lot of money in that and was able to, you know, kind of rise up in the world and be in, at court. And so Bess married him and she was able to start to enter that world as well. They were married for a while, for like 10 years. Um, they had eight children. It seemed like they were very affectionate with each other. Um, then he died. And she uh, was a widow again, and only this time she was a much wealthier widow. Um, she still decided to marry. So she married a guy called um, oh, William St. Low, Sir William St. Low. And he was um, the master of the yeoman guard for Queen Elizabeth. So she really got to kind of move around in court circles and get to be friends with Queen Elizabeth um, and was kind of really active at court during that time. She also... Um, during her time with William Cavendish, she'd started building a house and, and added, started some building improvements. So she was starting to become very active in her affairs and she always, um, took control of her affairs. So when she married William St. Lowe, she had it, um, specified that, you know, her houses were hers, um, almost like a prenup kind of thing. Um, and so she was married to William St. Lowe, um, again, and she was, I guess it was about six, seven years that she was married to him. I forget. Let me look it up. Yeah, six years. Um, and he died. He wound up leaving her everything in his will. And it was contested, but she had everything that he had. And he had quite a lot. So at that point, she's 36, 37. Um, she has eight children already that she needs to take care of. But she still decides to marry again. So she married the Earl of Shrewsbury. And George Talbot was his name. 
and they got married. Um, he was one of the highest ranking nobles in the realm. It was a really big deal. And then things got really dramatic for her. And things got dramatic because he was the one who was chosen to be the jailer for Mary, Queen of Scots. So suddenly there's all this drama because Mary, Queen of Scots is there. And it was really difficult for them because Mary, Queen of Scots was in prison, but that also meant they were in prison because they couldn't really leave because if anything would have happened, like they would have been blamed for it. So um, they were kind of in prison as well. At least the Earl of Shrewsbury was. Um, she best had kind of would come and go sometimes, um, but it put a lot of stress under their mar into their marriage, and also for Shrewsbury himself because he was spending a lot of his personal money. He wasn't getting reimbursed for a lot of the expenses for keeping Mary Queen of Scots, so things got really dramatic and really messy and just a really kind of soap opery and and just not particularly good for Bess. They were married for the longest. He was her longest marriage, though. Um, they were married for uh, 17 years, something like that. And when he finally died, it must have been longer than 17 years because he died when she was 63. Um, the imprisonment was 17 years. They kept Mary for 17 years. That's like a long time. Anyway, he died when she was 63. And... She, at that point, she really was going to stay a widow. She'd been married four times. And she took all of the money that she had a, acquired during this time, and she built Hardwick Hall, which was this amazing piece of architecture. It was close to her, where she was born, and it had these windows. And um, somebody remarked, Hardwick Hall, more window than wall. It was really unusual at the time to have so many windows. And it was this beautiful piece of architecture, Hardwick Hall. Google it. I'll stick a link in the comments. Um, and, and so, yeah, she took her money and, and did that, but she also through the kind of dynastic marriages that she had arranged, her granddaughter was Arbella Stewart, who had, was related to the Stuarts of King James Stewart. So, um, her granddaughter actually had a claim to the throne and through her eight children and the different marriages that she had arranged for them, she was able to have descendants who were doing really amazing things, even with claims to the throne for long after she she was gone. So she was a woman who started from very humble beginnings and wound up leaving quite um, an imprint on England and on buildings and all kinds of things. So you should check out Bess of Hardwick. She's really cool. Um, I'm going to work on a podcast for about her soon. So to learn more about the Renaissance English History Podcast, you can go to http colon slash slash englandcast.com, E-N-G-L-A-N-D-C-A-S-T.com. You can also go to facebook.com slash englandcast. And you can also subscribe to the Renaissance English History Podcast in your podcast listening service of choice, iTunes, Stitcher, um, whatever you use to listen to podcasts. So thank you so much. Talk to you soon. Bye.